Hi everyone, welcome to Ask an Armorer. My name's Kia and today I'm going to be showing you my process to diagnose a foil that doesn't show any lights when it's plugged into either a scoring machine or a test box. Now, please keep in mind that the list I'm going to be showing you today is not exhaustive, but in my experience it is it will cover all of the causes of this problem that occur about 90 to 95% of the time and anything else is a really weird one that isn't super common. Also, I'm assuming in this video that you've already isolated the issue to the foil and that it's not located somewhere else in the system. So all you need for this is the foil in question, a body cord that you know works. In this case, I'm going to be using my octopus as this is just what I have on hand for testing as well as a test box of some sort. I'll be using this older one from Absolute, but any of them will work so long as you're comfortable using it. So let's plug it in and see what we can see. Now, if you recall my video on how a foil circuitry works, they actually have an interesting circuitry in that their base state is on, or if it's working properly, the light on your test box should come on immediately and stay on steadily if the foil's working. You can see here that the one I am using is actually working, but it'll be just fine for the demonstration here. Now, I find it always really helpful to remember this base circuitry when I'm doing my diagnostics because I know if no light is showing, it means either one, the test box thinks that the foil is in the same state as when the tip is depressed or the circuit has been broken somewhere, or it means that the test box doesn't have enough input at all to even recognize a foil is connected to it. So when I'm doing my diagnostics, those are the two areas that I look for a problem that could potentially cause one of those issues. So as with all of my diagnostics, I will start at the tip end. Uh, this is just my process to make sure that I actually look at everything and don't accidentally miss something obvious because I inadvertently skipped looking at a certain portion or a certain step of the diagnostics method. So when it comes to a case of a light not coming on, the first thing that I look at is the tape. Now this only applies if the light not coming on isn't constant. Say you have hit your opponent, but nothing happened. In that case, I would look at the tape because the tape, again, recalling from the foil circuitry, actually is what is insulating the blade because the blade is the second part of the circuit in addition to the wire. So if the tape is not in good shape, it means that when your blade bends, the outer portion of the barrel can actually hit the, your opponent's lame and cause the entire thing to ground out. Therefore, this would actually be a really easy fix. If you look at your tape and it just seems like it's ratty, you can see metal through it, etc., all you need to do is take off any of that old remaining tape and replace it. However, if you're in a situation where it's not a intermittent after, or if you're in a situation where the light just isn't coming on at all and it's not just when you miss hit your opponent, I'm going to keep start looking for more. So the first thing, again, I'm going to start at the tip and I'm going to see if the button has been jammed down at all because clearly if this is just being held in place, the system's going to think that it's constantly there so it's just going to not show me any lights. And if that's the case, for a quick fix, if like say you're in the middle of a bout or something, you can try just holding your blade down and flicking the end either on the floor or on your test bench, just to see if you can't knock it loose. Um, if you can, this is a very temporary solution, but at least it gives you an indication that there might be an issue inside the barrel. So if this is the case, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is remove the tape and take the tip out of the barrel. So just unscrew the screws and remove that. Um, a very common issue with foils is that a lot of dirt and gunk will build up inside of them just based on the movement of the tip button. And so depending on how much is in there, it could mean that there's a sticky layer that is causing the tip to get stuck. So you're just going to need to take a Q-tip and some acetone and just give it a quick swab around in there to see if you can remove any of that gunk and you can do a quick test to see if that fixes the problem by, without screwing it in, just replacing the spring and the tip button and seeing if it moves more easily. However, if it doesn't, you'll have to keep going and look for something else. 
The next possible issue is that the barrel itself got a nick or got bent a little bit either from your fencing, if it got hit really hard, something may, may have accidentally gotten stepped on. There's a whole lot of reasons why the barrel could have gotten misshapen a little bit. So you're going to want to take a look at it and then you can either use a reamer to, if it seems that there is a actual burr or something inside of the barrel, to clean that out. Or if it just looks like it's smooth but slightly oblong, you can use a re-rounder to try and fix that. Now, just a word of caution, both of those will weaken the barrel. Both the, the reamer will be actually removing materials, so the walls will be slightly thinner, and the re-rounding process will just introduce more fatigue wear into the barrel. That will mean it will fail on you at some point in the future. So just be cautious if you have to do either of those that the barrel's lifespan has just shortened. So keep an eye on that for anything in the future. And well, you can retest the barrel after that as well to see if that has helped the problem at all. And if it hasn't, if the tip is still feeling like it's getting jammed in the barrel even after trying that, you may just have to rewire the foil as unfortunately that's the only way to actually replace the barrel, which is what you may need to do at this point. So still in the tip, if the tip button is actually moving just fine and there doesn't seem to be much resistance at all, uh, what the issue could be is that there has become a layer of glue or something like that, say you've just rewired your weapon and all it's not working, it could be that there's been a bit of overflow of the glue into that into the barrel and formed a layer over the cap, therefore preventing it from being able to connect at all. So what you can do to try this is take a uh, sharp screwdriver or something and very gently just scratch that surface a little bit and maintaining contact with the wire, lean it against the side of the barrel. And if in that case the wire turns on, you know that there's actually a layer of something coating that wire end in the cap that you may need to, again, gently scrape off. And this is a bit tricky because it is very easy to use too much pressure and actually damage the wire or damage the insulating cap, which of course would then mean you have to rewire the entire thing anyways, but between a careful application of scratching off the worst of it and again going in with a Q-tip and some acetone to remove any excess, you may be able to clear it up. But that's just, it's better to be more cautious using glue than less so that you just don't have to deal with that problem. And of course, on occasion, the glue coating may have just been too thick and you're not going to be able to break through without risking very severe damage. Or that may not be the issue at all, so it's time to keep looking. So the final thing that may be the issue in the tip is if the pieces have accidentally become mismatched. So there are different styles of tip and Theoretically, they shouldn't fit together, like there's the French style, German style, Leon Paul style, etc. But with age, with wear, with manufacturing errors, it could be that inadvertently one of these pieces has gotten switched around. Uh, we are all human, sometimes we grab the wrong thing, or if you're new to this, you may not yet be familiar enough with the innards to recognize them easily. It's not a problem, it happens to all of us, but if that if you do have other spare sets and you can determine what style your tip is supposed to be, for example, I know all U of T equipment should be German because that's just a standardization that I put into place and therefore that means my life is easier because I just know to expect that and can have most of that on hand. However, on occasion we get donated weapons that aren't German, and then I have to decide if I want to just try to use those as is and maintain them with a the little bit of other spare stuff that I have, or if I want to rewire and try to switch them to German. But in any case, it's very possible that sometimes the tips get switched around, and because these parts are not meant to fit together perfectly, they might not connect properly. So you can look at the pieces of your tip and make sure that they're all actually the same manufacturing type. So that concludes all of the things that I typically see as an issue to cause the foil to not have any lights go on in the tip. Um, 
If you've tried switching out the tip, cleaning it out, everything like that, and nothing seems to be helping, it's time to keep going and look further down the blade. So if you haven't already, I would remove the rest of the tape because you're going to need to be able to look at the wire. I also recommend making sure that you have a really nice clear light uh, so that you can catch any glint of copper potentially shining through. And what you're going to do is just very carefully look all the way along the length of the blade to see if you can see anywhere that the insulation has become disturbed. Because if it has and it is contacting the side of the blade, again, the circuit will not be completed, it'll be grounding out, and the foil will not function as you want it to. So just take a look around for any of that, and if you don't see that, it could be that that's not the problem. It could be though that the brake is somewhere either right under the barrel or really close to the bell guard somewhere in there or underneath the wire and it's just hard to see with the eye. But I'm gonna go, if you don't see anything, it's time to keep looking. So finally, I will look inside the connect or inside the bell guard at the connector itself. So the first thing I'm going to look at is to make sure that the wire is actually attached to the connector. This goes back to the test box actually having enough input to recognize the foil's been connected. If that wire isn't connected properly to the connector, then there's going to be no input. So if that's the case, this is a really easy fix. All you need to do is reattach that wire and tighten it down and test again to see if that works. If that still doesn't help, what it may be the issue is there is a layer of insulation still on the wire. Again, I've discussed before how there's two layers of insulation on wires typically, the red or blue cloth or paper exterior one, and then a clear glue coating. And that glue coating is harder to remove because you don't, can't see it. So you can try sanding down the wire again until it shows a really bright copper and then reattach it and see if that works. And now that's the most common set of issues that I have seen that cause a foil to not give any indicator lights whatsoever. Of course, there may be others that there are all sorts of weird and wonderful individual situations that can happen, but uh, you'd have to look for those ones a bit more closely. So, and if none of these solutions have helped, you may just be resigned to rewiring your foil in general, as there is something grounding out somewhere that you can't spot with the naked human eye. So it's not the most fun solution and does take up a fair bit more time, but it may be what you have to do. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you found this video to be helpful. If you did, please be sure to like and subscribe, and as always, if you have any questions, comments, or other topics you'd like me to cover in the future, let me know down below. See you in the next one. Bye.